All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard. This is our new chapter. Do you have cell service? We're not talking about cell phones. Uh-uh. We're talking about the cells that make your body. And these are the big questions that we want to research. These are the big problems or questions we want to learn more about as we go along the chapter. So in your notebook, Let's write slide one. This is slide one. So in your notebook, write slide one. And let's copy down problem number one, problem number two, and problem number three. Do that now. Go ahead and pause the video. All right, problem number one says, why are proteins so important to the cell? So we want to keep learning about proteins that are found in our cells and the proteins in our body. We want to keep learning, continue learning, why they're so important and why we should like them, what they do for us. Go back to the what's for dinner. Um, as we eat different proteins, we get little molecules we digest called amino acids, and we use them to build different important proteins in the body. Enzymes and their chemical reactions, neurotransmitters and the emotions in our brain that we feel. Transporter proteins, we'll be learning a lot about those in this chapter. They move molecules in and out of cell, so they little tunnels in the cell membrane. And contractile proteins, we'll learn more about those also. And how contractile proteins allow muscles to change size. This is a relaxed muscle, it's longer, and a contracted muscle, it's shorter. So they allow us to do work. You have motor proteins that move important molecules in the cell. This is them, these motor proteins. They carry cargo like this cargo here, and they move it around in the cell. This and many more proteins we will study as they affect our lives and our cells. Hopefully you find some interest in it. All right, problem number two. What's happening inside our cells and organs, those bigger parts of our body, the organs, like heart and liver, lungs, muscles, What's happening inside our organs when we fail to survive? So cells make up the organs. And what's going wrong when we have a problem, when we're unhealthy? We'll learn about our health and our cells and survival. Also, we will study abiotic variables that impact organisms. Abiotic is non-living, so non-living things in our environment that impact organisms. And we'll study how. Specifically, we will study the effects of pollution and how it's affecting the cells. So we're going to really zoom in on the body and study how pollution affects our cells. All right, let's keep moving forward. All right, we've already learned that pH can affect species populations and cause some species to go extinct if the pH goes down too low or too high. We know that some species require a certain level of acidity or basic, or maybe they need a neutral, a seven pH. All living things need to keep their body's molecules in balance, including pH. We're gonna look at what the cells do to help keep that uh, going. So we'll start looking at the blood and blood cells and Things like acidosis, we'll learn more about how acidosis and other pollutants in the body could lead to trouble and what it does to our blood cells or the other cells of our body, especially when we are dealing with obesity, drug use, alcohol use, or pollutants from the environment, types of water pollution and such. We may or may not in class watch some videos, but we will be thinking about our lifestyle and what we're doing to our cells and are we keeping the right molecules in balance in our body? All right, this is slide five. So in your notebook, let's write slide five because we have some questions to answer. So slide five, let's put it in presentation mode. All right. In slide five, you want to answer this question. It says, what body cell is this? So this is a body cell. This is a body cell. What body cell do you think it could be? It looks so strange, doesn't it? And you have trillions of these in your body. Or at least billions, anyways. 
Trillions may be a little too high. Definitely billions. But you have many of them. What kind of body cell do you think it is? Just take a guess. We'll talk about it in class later and see what you think. Now, this cell, this mystery cell, is stained with pigments. It's been colored. This is not its natural color. It's been colored for a reason. Scientists do it all the time. They use things that glow, like this, this pigment here. So they use chemicals, pigments, like in this bottle, that glow to make the cell glow in certain areas. It says, look at the unstained cell. This is an unstained cheek cell, I believe. So this is what cells normally look like if we looked at them in a microscope. Why do you think scientists like this scientist here, and they're using special technology to stain and dye and color the cells using new technological equipment in the lab? Why do you think they do it? Go ahead and write an answer. Why do you think scientists color cells this way? So this again is slide five, answer question one and question three here. As we do this chapter, we'll be using microscopes in our class for the very first time, and we're gonna study cells. And we're going to study cells with a purpose. Our goals for studying cells is not just doing it because it's fun. We want to learn skills like how to do a microscope slide or practice it. Basic science skills. But we also want to study water pollution. And we also want to be able to measure the effect of water pollution on cells. We want to measure the effect. I should say E for effect. Measure the effect of water pollution on cells. We're actually going to do this as a lab. Hope you're looking forward to it. So we're getting environmental again. Water pollution this time, not climate change. All right, let's keep moving. This is slide seven, and slide seven is terrific because it reminds us just how many atoms it takes to make even one cell, and how many cells we have, one times 10 to the 14th power, to make an adult body. So let's write this down. Copy down slide seven in your notebook. And then get this definition right here. Go ahead and pause it. All right, it says there is 1 times 10 to the 14th power cells to make a human adult body. Do that math. 10 to the 14. This is called scientific notation. And what that means is take the number 10 and add 14 zeros to it. If you add 14 zeros to it, you end up with a pretty big number this number, which is actually pretty darn big. A lot of zeros. That's a lot of cells. Think about this. This is how many cells it takes to make an adult body. And you have all types of bodies, right? So 100 trillion atoms all come together and form molecules. And those molecules, protein polymers, carbohydrate molecules and polymers and lipid molecules and polymers and nucleic acid molecules and polymers all come together to form these complex cells and then they come together to make tissue and then those tissues a groups groups of specific types of cells then make our organs so it'd be stomach cells together make a stomach or the liver liver cells get together and make a liver organ and then you have the overall organism like Anderson Silva, the great MMA fighter, the spider. Let's check out a fun simulation to think about the size of things as they relate to us. All right, to think of the size of things and the scale, which is on what scale do we find cells, on what level or scale size do we find atoms? Let's start with the really big things, as in a coffee bean, a grain of rice, a sesame seed, that's the kind of seeds you'd find on the top of a bun, or Asian food, or 12-point font typing. Now, as I move this to the right, we're going to zoom more and more in. Follow me on this great journey. We're zooming in. That's the size of a grain of salt, 0.5 millimeters wide, so half a millimeter wide. Look at this. You can even see single-cell organisms. These are protists, paramecium and amoebas. Amoebas, some amoebas, cause stomach sickness, stomach flu, diarrhea, yikes. If we zoom out, see if you can see the paramecium, this paramecium species that is 500 micrometers wide, 
See if you can see it if I zoom all the way back. See if you can still see it as I go all the way to the back. You can see it, right? Amoeba is single-celled organism. So some cells are big, some cells are small. You can actually see the amoeba here from vision, just from your regular eye, right? No magnification. I don't know if that's true or not. At least in the simulation here it is. All right, we're seeing a human egg, sperm, photoreceptors. Those are, these are the cells of the eye, skin cells. Look at that, red blood cells are very small. Now we're moving into the small, things smaller than cells. So a red blood cell, that's a single cell. The things we're going to start seeing now are smaller than human cells. We got the X chromosome. That determines your gender. Women have two X chromosomes. Guys only have one X chromosome. This is uh, DNA, nucleic acid uh, chromosomes. Mitochondria, these are structures inside your cells. These are the give you energy. We got bacteria, smaller than human cells. Lysosome is a part of a cell. It's, a, it's an organ or structure within our cells. We have different viruses. Viruses are very small. You can see viruses are much smaller than a bacteria. Keep going in. Oh my God, will it ever end? Ribosomes are inside our cells. They're a part, they're a type of protein in our cells. tRNA. Oh, that's a nucleic acid that's found within our cells. Hemoglobin is a protein within our cells. Antibodies here. I think proteins. Protein polymers, probably. Phospholipids, these are lipid polymers inside our cells that make our cells. Glucose molecule and different molecules, water molecule, all the way down to the single carbon atom. And then we zoom all the way back. So it went from coffee bean to cells to bacteria to viruses to molecules that make our cells. These things are small. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is slide eight. And slide eight, let's get this definition. All right, membranes. I made the screen a little bigger. I know half the time you're on your cell phone, so I want to make sure you can read it. So this was slide eight, and it says membranes. Let's copy it down. It says each cell has a protective outer membrane. It's colored green here. This is the coating, the membrane. It's a thin structure. As you can see, it's thin. And it separates two areas with fluid. So the fluid around our cells and the fluid inside our cells. And this green coating, or at least in this model it's green, is made up of lipid fat polymers, large fat polymers. And they, so basically our cells are coated in fat or lipids. All right, next for slide eight, we have this question. It says, determine the number of membranes in each image. Image A, a model of a cell. Image B, a cup of boba. And C, a wetsuit, a girl in a wetsuit, a giant girl. Look how much bigger she is than that dude. Oh, my God. All right. A, you have to count the membranes, the thin structures separating two areas. This is a membrane separating areas. So every little section here is a membrane. The nucleus has a membrane. The entire cell itself has a membrane. You could count forever. One. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to estimate that A has 21 little things with membrane. Things that have thin protective coatings that separate sections. 21. B, think about this. You have a cup. A cup separates the liquid inside from the outer environment. That is a membrane. A cup is a membrane. Inside, you have boba balls. Boba, each boba inside a boba drink has a membrane. How much boba do you think is in this cup? I'm going to say a lot. I'm going to say there's 50. So if you count the cup plus the boba balls and the membranes inside, I'm going to say there's 51 membranes in B. And then C, this is a crazy one. You have a wetsuit. A wetsuit is a thin membrane that protects the cells of the body from the outside ocean. So the wetsuit is a membrane, plus think of all the membranes of every cell that makes this person. I would put trillions of membranes for person number C. Membranes, membranes, lots of membranes. Did I say membranes? 
All right, that wraps us up for this video, our first video for Do You Have Cell Service?